This video is a lesson from my course on Discover Ansible. To find out more, visit discoveransible.com. Hi, my name is Creston, and I'm going to give you an overview of Ansible. So what we're going to cover is what is Ansible, and then we're going to look at a few different concepts that I'm going to explain. We're going to look over the host inventory, we're going to understand playbooks, plays, tasks and modules, handlers, variables, templates and facts, as well as roles. So let's get started. So what is Ansible? So Ansible is a server configuration management, orchestration and deployment tool. Now that's a lot of words, but what it basically means is you can manage the configurations of your servers with it uh, quite easily. You can also do orchestration. Orchestration means that you ask for one server to do one thing while you're doing something else with another. For example, you could take a server out of a load balanced array, apply patches, or reboot it, and then add it back to the load balanced array. And then deployment is actually getting applications onto uh, a server, deploying new code to it. Now, one of the hallmarks of Ansible is simplicity. It's, it's very simple to get started, um, but it has a lot of power behind it as well. Um, Ansible is agentless. You don't have to have an agent running on any of the servers that you manage. It just relies on uh, SSH and Python. Uh, now, it uses SSH to make all its connections and to run all of its configuration changes. Now, because of this, it favors pushing configurations. Um, so you have a workstation that has uh, the code on it, or you could have a secondary server, and then you push those configurations or run those tasks on those servers. Another thing that Ansible does is its configuration is done using YAML, which is, stands for yet another markup language. Uh, so it's relatively easy to read as opposed to having to actually read code. So to sum it all up, what Ansible basically does essentially is it is a set of tasks in playbooks that are run on a particular set of hosts. So it's through these tasks that it is enabled to do the server configuration uh, orchestration if you choose, and also deployment. So let's first talk about the host inventory. So this is your list of hosts or servers that you want to manage with Ansible. Uh, these can be organized into groups uh, to make it easier to manage uh, multiple servers. Within the inventory, you can also set um, certain ports or to other write other config, uh, connection settings. Now, typically, the host inventory is a flat file, but you can use plugins that communicates with cloud providers like AWS EC2 or Rackspace. To give an example of what a inventory file looks like, uh, this is what it looks like. So you have a web servers group, and then uh, this is web1.example.com and web2. So this enables you to talk to these two servers. And then this is your, uh, these are your database servers, and it's under the DB servers group. And you can have groups within groups to help make uh, management easier if you deal with regions, um, or maybe you have um, production or staging types of grouping you wanna do. So let's talk about playbooks. So essentially playbooks are script of tasks to run against a set of hosts. And it typically, the playbooks are designed in, by way of a hierarchy. So playbooks contain plays and plays themselves are a, a series of tasks. Plays contain tasks and then the tasks actually call modules and those do all the work. So let's look at what a play is. So plays are basically a set of tasks. 
They reside in playbooks and typically are applied against a subset of the hosts. For example, um, maybe a play is you want to install and configure Nginx on all the web servers. So let's look at an example of a playbook file so you can uh, get an idea. So this is a playbook file and this is actually contains just a single play. That play is set up web servers. So this is a single play that's going to be applied against the host's web servers. So this is referencing the group that I set up in the host inventory earlier, web servers. So this is the play it's going to run and it's going to run these tasks sequentially on those servers. So it's going to install Nginx, configure Nginx, and start Nginx. Uh, and we'll cover handlers in a bit here. But this is essentially a play that's in a playbook that runs tasks. Now I'll make a little note here for the uh, what we're going to look at in a minute is that tasks call modules. And this is calling the apt module because I'm installing software in Ubuntu. Uh, this is the template module that I'm running. And then this is the service module that I'm running to do different units of work. So let's talk about tasks module and modules. So tasks call modules to alter some configuration on a server. Uh, the changes are made in an idempotent manner, meaning that you can run a given task multiple times and it's not going to keep changing state. It's going to just ensure that uh, that one state is going to be set. Now there are many, many modules provided by Ansible, over 200. Um, so usually you can find what you're looking for in the existing set of modules to do the configuration changes you need. However, you can write your own. And modules do everything. So they install packages, run commands, manage services, uh, manage your template files, uh, mounting drives, etc. cetera. Um, so usually checking the module uh, index is the first step. And if you don't find what you're looking for, you can always write something yourself. So handlers, what are handlers? Handlers are tax tasks that get run after certain triggers. So they're always run at the end of a play and are only run once. So no matter how many times they've been called or triggered, they just run one time. So an example of this is after configuring um, say Apache or Nginx, you can set up a handler to restart it or, or reload the configuration. Okay, so let's talk about variables, templates, and facts because they're all um, have a relationship. So variables are essentially variables. They allow you to easily change your configuration for different environments. So typically what you want to do is you want to set and alter variables to change uh, different configuration settings as opposed to rewriting, keep rewriting your tasks. So templates allow you to copy configuration files and update certain sections using variables. And it uses the uh, Jenja2 templating. And facts are information collected about each server in your inventory. Uh, for example, it keeps track of IP address, memory, disk space, etc. And you can use these facts to help with server configuration. So you can apply certain changes to templates. So if you need one server to talk to another one, you can actually use the facts uh, to help them communicate with each other. So now that we've covered all of this, let's take a look at this um, playbook that we've looked at previously. And this is, again, the single play set up web servers applied to uh, this set of hosts. So if you look at this task, this is install Nginx and it's using the apt module. And it's state, it states that it needs to be present. So as, a, as opposed to saying install this, it just says make sure it's present. This goes back to the item potent nature of Ansible. You express the state you want the configuration to be in as opposed to giving it instructions. Uh, similarly, it says state re it's been reloaded or the state it's been started. So it's phrased in the past tense. 
In other words, it's the state that you want it to be in. And then under the, look, continuing on our tasks, you see Configure NGINX, and this uses the template module, oh, excuse me, and it's going to copy a file called nginxconf.j2 to a particular destination. And you'll see right below the template, Notify, and it's going to reload NGINX. So that's the handler we have below to reload NGINX. And lastly, it's going to start NGINX. It's going to call the service module. And it's going to say the service name NGINX. Make sure it's started and make sure it's enabled, which just means when up on reboot, make sure that the service starts. So what are roles? So we haven't looked at any roles in the playbook so far. Roles allow better organization and reuse of your tasks. Essentially, you're wrapping up um, tasks and handlers and templates all into a particular role that you can call that are usually configured with variables. This helps keep your configuration dry, so which means, you know, do not repeat yourself. Um, it's defined by a particular file structure, and you can choose your level of granularity. What that means is that you could have a web role that does all the configuration necessary for a web server, or you could have a Nginx role and a app role that you apply to web servers. Now, Ansible Galaxy is a community site for sharing these roles, and you can find out more information at galaxy.ansible.com. But let's take a look um, at what our playbook would look like if we were using roles. So we could see this is a single play in a playbook that says set up web servers. We're applying to the same hosts. But the roles, I just picked two roles. I'm applying a web role and a web jobs role. So all of the tasks and handlers and uh, even some other variables are, are placed in the roles themselves. So it makes managing servers a lot, e a lot easier. Okay, so in conclusion, we reviewed Ansible. We looked at playbooks and plays, tasks and modules, and how they interrelate. Uh, we looked at handlers, and we looked at variables, templates, and facts. And lastly, roles and how they can help uh, streamline your configuration. So for additional resources, uh, the detailed documentation for Ansible is at docs.ansible.com. Um, the module index, which I use frequently for all those 200 plus modules, is at docs.ansible.com slash modules by category. Or you can look at the modules by different, um, by different sorting. So if you're looking for fine-grained access control and auditing of server configuration, you can check out Ansible Tower at ansible.com slash tower. Thanks. Thanks for watching. To be notified of additional courses or tutorials, visit rubytreesoftware.com slash courses. If you're interested in learning more about my course on Discover Ansible, visit discoveransible.com.